This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Thursday, March the 28th, 2019. It's the feast day of St. John of Capistrano. He was born in the 14th century in Abruzzo on the other side of the Italian peninsula from Rome. He was a Franciscan friar who was distinguished as a preacher and theologian. Later in life, he was nicknamed the Soldier Saint when he led a crusade against the invading Ottomans at Belgrade alongside the great Hungarian commander, John Hunyadi. When modern people tend to caricature the backward-thinking, non-progressive Middle Ages, they're thinking of the 14th and 15th centuries. This was the time of the Black Death. It was the time of many Muslim invasions. It was the time of great political upheaval and all that was dealt with by monks and bishops who in many cases went to bed one night as pastors and woke up the next day as managers of estates and properties. Some responded to wealth and power really well and others really, really didn't. St. John of Capistrano has fallen out of favor in recent years because of his preaching against Muslims, against Jews, against the dozens of heretical groups that popped up all across central Italy at the time. Modern people look back and see a thoroughly unprogressive man. In his own context, though, people were dying all over the place at young ages. Plagues continued to break out here and there. The Muslim army continued to invade at the edges of Christendom, each time kidnapping people and enslaving them. The Jews at the time were largely secular and almost universally wealthy. It was a fascinating moment in history. St. John was no racist, no hater. He gave some tough sermons, and he called for some tough reforms, mostly within himself and within his own order. Whatever negative or unmodern things he did, he was a saint and a zealous man. He died in 1456 at the age of 70. He was canonized about 200 years later, and he's the patron of lawyers. Today is also the feast day of St. Stephen Harding, the founder of the Cistercian Religious Order. Born in England around A.D. 1060, he was educated at Sherburne Abbey, and then left to become a traveling scholar, which was a thing back then. He spoke English, Norman, French, and Latin, so he was able to get around. He went from Dorset, where he was born, up to Scotland, and then to Paris, and then to Rome, and finally back to the Burgundy region of France, where he connected with Molesme Abbey under the Abbot Robert. While he was there, He wrote that he was anxious about the increasing wealth that the abbey had and the increasing connection to the powerful people of the area. When the abbot Robert expressed a similar concern, he and Stephen and about 22 other monks got permission from the Archbishop of Lyon to set up a new monastery in Citeaux, a wilderness outside of Dijon. They wanted a small, simple, austere place. And the Duke of Burgundy, who was impressed with their holiness, offered to build them a little church specifically under the patronage of the Blessed Virgin Mary. They accepted this one-time, no-strings-attached gift. And since then, every Cistercian church has been specifically named for the Virgin Mary. Things started slowly for the new order, and very few monks joined up. It wasn't until about A.D. 1112 that a young man named Bernard of Clairvaux came knocking with about 30 friends. They too were fed up with the wealth and power of the monasteries, and they wanted what the Cistercians were offering. Bernard was the right man for the right time, and he and Stephen were an excellent team, and together they set in motion the Cistercian order. For those who have never heard of the Cistercians, seek out the movie Into Great Silence. You won't regret it. Finally today in 1979 outside Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, a coolant tank sprung a small leak. No one noticed, which was a problem. The Unit 2 tank got so low that the enriched uranium rods overheated and caused a partial meltdown at the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant. No one was hurt. It was a scary moment today. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.